being pushed. You are now being recorded. Um, so I have maybe just one, maybe a couple things on my mind. Georg, I'm pretty sure you probably want to talk about releases. I do. <laughs> so, um, why don't you go ahead and get us, get us started? So with regards to releasing metrics, we've been discussing this for a long time. And at the governing board meeting, we made some decisions on versioning and how to release it to bring these conversations to an end. So now that we have the meeting minutes on the mailing list, thank you, Matt, for posting them. I propose that we put together a timeline and start working towards our first release. And the goal that I think would be nice to have is to have a first release by ChaosCon in August or Open Source Summit North America. And so the timeline that I proposed on the mailing list is to give working groups two months to finish up their metrics and make them ready for release. And by the end of June, we can then enter into the public review phase. And I thought we might want two public review phases, one release, one alpha, one beta, whatever you want to call them. Um, so that is my proposal. So the pub, so two months from now is what, May, and then the period of review. So I guess I haven't read your email. So would we be trying to release a beta in June or are we just going to wait until the summit itself? The release would be in August, but okay. we have July for the public review and revisions. So I guess we have three months then. Okay. April, May, and June. That's fine. I'm working just, groups too. It's almost April, so maybe I sh should chill out about that. Yeah, there was discussion yesterday, Georg, in the in the risk call that was about moving the timeline up just a little bit. That came from Kate. But I mean, I don't know that it matters too much. Moving it up, you mean having the release earlier than yeah. August? Yeah. I'm fine with that. But I mean, at that point, it's probably just like two weeks, like take every date that you posted, you know what I mean? And just move them all up two weeks. I don't, I don't know that that does us any good. So maybe it, we it, it might help um, for people who are going, going to chaos Con or going to uh, that conference. Yeah. Um, just to be a little bit more prepared when they get there about like discussing the release okay. and everything. So I do kind of, then do you kind of propose the two weeks earlier? Just take yeah. that schedule that he had and, okay. I'm I like cool. it. Okay. Hey, are you okay with that, what you proposed? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I'm just looking up the dates of the open source summit. I'm taking notes, by the way. In the shared document that we have. For yeah, I'll time. share it to the list here. Yeah. So the proposed release date that I have right now is one week before the summit and moving it two weeks up just means we have three weeks before the summit. That'd be great. Okay. I didn't have to capitalize everything there. Um, I think, okay, so. I'm not making faces at what you're saying. I'm allergy in here. <laughs> You're excused. Whoa. Um, and then I think maybe the other thing is about how we identify some release timing. Yeah, did you have more to talk about on this? Because I, I did. The, the thing that has to go into the working groups is that they decide on criteria for what is a metric worthy of release, what are the quality standards that they want to have. 
Um, and then we have to get together across the working groups at some point, maybe in May or June to make sure we have a consistent format. But the first step is for the working groups to decide these are the metrics we want to have ready by then and start working on that. Okay. Um, so then, okay. So I know in growth maturity and decline, we had tried to do that before the leadership summit. Um, and we, we had code, the code section in decent shape. Um, okay. So I guess the question is, is it, are we, I don't want to question leaving the working groups to do their work and, and control the release criteria, but maybe some general guidance might be helpful in terms of, you know, what constitutes, do we have a, I don't know, some kind of general parameters that should be satisfied. Like in my mind, it would be that the template has been filled out and discussed and approved inside the working group. And you're talking about like the detailed mm -hmm. template page. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there's some, I mean, it, it, we can use, we can call it guidance and mm -hmm. not um, a directive, but yep. We don't want to be heavy handed, but I think guidance would be helpful. Okay. I've made a note of that. Okay. The general guidance might be helpful. The way I see it, it's not something we dictate on them. It's something where we as working groups get together and we just say, yes, we want to do that. And we can very well do that here on this call and on the mailing list. Mm -hmm. Do what are your, I mean, do, do so it's just a different framing of the same thing where we agree on this is what we want out of the metrics when we release them. And so like a, a table with the name and a description and a link to a detail. Like that's, maybe that's the guidance that I think you're talking about, Sean. Yeah, yeah. So could you post that to the mailing list, Sean, so that we have the discussion there since sure. all conversation here on the call is only temporary and then finalized on the mailing yeah. list? I can do that. <laughs> All right. Um, well, so so then I think that kind of Pierre, did you have anything else on this, on the uh, releasing? No, that's all. Well, then I I did. I had one more thing, and I think it ties directly to what you're talking about, Sean. Mm -hmm. So the releases are going to go to a web page. So they're going to go to the metrics web page. Yep. On chaos community, and so. Um, I think one of the questions that we have to figure out is what the structure of that web page is going to look like. Um, I think and it's I, beautiful. Okay, I will <laughs> make note yeah, of that. It should smell <laughs> nice. Possible. But I think the way that it looks is going to be highly related to the guidance we give the working groups or how the working groups kind of put those metrics forward. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I'm going to bring this up real quickly. I shared this before. I just, to me, this continues to be a, a structure that I like. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat here. So this is the SPDX license list. And I understand that the chaos output will not look exactly like this. I get it. <clears throat> but the license list from, so this is the, the SPDX kind of license group. And they discuss and then release this license list at regular intervals, right? And so um, people bring forward new licenses to add to the list if they need to be added. And so over time, this license list grows based on the addition of new licenses. And so to me, this is quite similar to, I think as the metrics list grows, um, it, in new releases, new metrics will be added to the list and potentially removed for whatever reason. Um, and so to me, and you could all totally disagree, but 
the web page would have a similar look to this <coughs> where it says full name identifier um, FSF or Libra OSI approved text that we, we would just have it broken down a table for each of the working groups. So DNI, GMD, oh, or Kevin's proposed prototype here. Um, maybe we take I was just, I was just um, sharing that, um, what we have right now as okay. a prototype. Yeah, so it's just based on this idea. Yeah, so, okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. So basically this just reflects so say for example, GMD right in the middle there, there's the focus area. I don't know, do you all see this? Do you want me to share my screen? I'm not seeing a screen. I guess I should- it was, You put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's, you put it in the chat. I can also share my screen. Maybe, share. I'm seeing it now. Um, Okay, so for those of you that aren't. Whoa, now it's giant. <laughs> That's your problem. I know. <laughs> so, um, so basically the idea here is that um, if you just take a look at really just this to start and kind of this section, just the GMD section up on top, but there would be the focus areas with the metric and the question that it answers. So this would be the table and then another focus area with the metrics and the questions. And DNI would do the same thing. DNI has their, I think this is a nice structure mm -hmm. to me. I, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, and then the, the question would be like, if you clicked on contributors here, mm -hmm. like on the focus area for community growth, does that take you to a new page? So for example, in the SPDX license list, if I clicked on BSD zero clause, it takes me to a new page called mm -hmm. BSD zero clause, right? And each one of these obviously takes me to a new page. So do we want to follow that model that it takes us to a new page, which is the detail, what you were talking about earlier, Sean, right? The, all of the details about this metric. Right. Or do we want it just to be down at the bottom of the page? So this would just be a, a very long HTML page. A single long HTML page, you know, will be easier for people who want to align the metrics with a tool to consume. Okay. Just read down one, one HTML unit. Okay. But, and I don't know that that, um, the only, the only downside is if, as long as we provide a, it's hard sometimes on that, in that structure to provide people a way to go back to where they were easily. Okay. Unless the back button, I mean, maybe the, I think you can configure it so the back button works. It's just how the, how the UI flows that maybe we want to attend to slightly. Okay. Other thoughts on this from other people? Go live okay. metrics. What's that? Is it going to show the actual data from, from projects or is it just going to describe what the metric is? Um, just the definition. Yeah. The actual data from projects would be embedded in a tool. Yeah. Well, I, I mean the, under the proposed or what, what, if you click through those links that are, uh, that currently exist there. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. I mean, there's a definition, but there's also going to be like sample implementations. Um, uh, mm -hmm. places where it's implemented, like tools it's yep. implemented with. Is yes. that handy? And, and I think that's a really great thing, but mm -hmm. I, I will say that I agree with Sean a little bit. It's, it's kind of a jarring user experience because it's like you're suddenly in a different part of the website. Okay. With no like context for where you've ended up. Okay. So are you kind of leaning towards just a single page then? Yeah, no, I like the individual pages, but it should definitely feel like it's it's part of this list and not just a separate page that we're linking to that's on its own somewhere. Okay. I mean, if we want a single page, I mean, that's something that you could just generate one. Like if the purpose is just to feed bots or just to have something where it's all in one place, um, 
when you have all the individual pages done, we could just create another page that was nothing but all of those pages in order, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Um, other thoughts on this? I'm pretty neutral. I just want to follow what people think, but. Yeah, I'm in favor of having one or the other, but not both. One way, one, one thing we have to do is create a PDF of the metrics. So just a PDF printout of the pages that we create. Uh, and there it doesn't matter whether it's all on one page or on separate pages. We just merge them together into one PDF. And if someone wants one reference, they can just download that PDF and scroll through it. I think this was Ben's point, right? Would that satisfy what you were talking about, Ben? Um, well, I mean, Sean, Sean was more interested in like robots, right? Scanning it. Just, um, I mean, I think if we can make it easy for tool consumer, tool developers to link directly to the definition. Oh, um, okay. I, we do that with Augur. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that for Grimoire Lab and that would also be something that they would benefit from. I don't know if there's any Grimoire Levians on the call. Um, don't know. Doesn't appear so. But you can link to an anchor on a single page or you can link to the individual pages. Yeah. So you have the link either way. Yeah, I will. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on this? This is very helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Gary, for typing that down. Um, okay. Okay, good. Cool. Thank you. Um, so were you suggesting to have this discussion also on the list, Georg? Yes, very much so. Okay. All right. Um, I had another, I had one item. I'm um, slowly going through the web page to try to improve just the experience of, of ending up on the web page. So I'm just kind of reflecting on piece by piece. You know, it's always that newcomer experience. Um, so basically long and short of it is, is I'm trying to reduce some of the text that's on the web page because I think it's a little long in some cases. Um, and trying to kind of get ready for the metrics tab, the metrics link at the top of the chaos project page to, this is going to be the, this is going to be the link that contains this new list to the released metrics. Um, and then on the participate page, I'd, I'd like to, I don't know what you all think of this, but right now if you go to chaos.community and you hover over participate, I'll put it in the chat here again. But if you hover over participate, it doesn't do anything. Do, do you think there's any value um, across these top top links like about community chaos con software metrics that there's any value in having direct links to the working groups the working group repos right now we right now you have to go to a page and then you can get there you know what I'm saying so you, like, you would hover, hover over participate and it would show all of the different working groups in a drop down. That makes sense to me. Okay. From a um, chaos member, I, it makes perfect sense to me. From someone coming from the outside, clicking on a link in the menu and then ending up on GitHub feels broken. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the complaints that we heard um, as well. What are yeah. What if we created a page for each work group and just pulled in the README and have that on the website? 
Sure. But it doesn't take them to a GitHub repository. That just takes them to. Yeah. Thing about it, we would have to make sure that the links on the README are um, absolute references to GitHub and not just um, relative ones like we have now usually. Okay. Well, maybe we can play around with it a little bit. Maybe even just the drop down just says working groups or something like that. And it's just a single page. Well, just an, another suggestion. Maybe yeah. in, addition, in addition to the working groups, maybe we could also have the software for this, like Augur and Grimoire Lab. Just like oh, yeah, like Grimoire Lab and Augur. Yep, that makes sense. So I, I'm trying to think I, something along these lines, maybe. Maybe it's not solved right now, but I think this is a good idea. Just trying to get people to the spots they want to be right off that top banner. So so I am a newcomer, and uh, my, my feedback as a newcomer is um, try to reduce the amount of text. I am. I have pull requests on that <laughs> a number of places. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Again, just if you have comments on the website, you, you can either ship them my way or just issue them as a pull request. Okay, cool. Um, so with that, I think I'd like to introduce Andy who's joining us. Um, Andy is the, the individual you've see, been seeing some emails from with respect to the new value working group. So Andy, you wanna say hi and <laughs> tell us what's going on? <laughs> Hi everybody. Uh, well, first of all, very nice to meet you, um, and I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. Um, uh, so I'm I'm interested in the value uh, working group. So I'm going to help organize that, and um, I've been working with Georg and, and Matt to write a little launch plan for the value working group. And uh, I, I guess just to start off, um, very much uh, would encourage anyone who's interested, you know, join this group and be part of it. Uh, the one of the first things we'll need to do is to define, you know, actually what is value and uh, what do we want to do with this group. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm interested in the, in the views of the group for that. Um, we are going to schedule a um, weekly call for the value working group. And if you haven't done so, I'm just posting into the chat the link to the um, scheduling tool that we're going to use to to pick a time for a weekly call that works best for the most people. That's on Google. That's on Doodle. And um, so, sort of beyond that, um, maybe we'll just have a little intro discussion about this about this value group. Um, in my mind, a uh, primary focus of the group is, is going to be centered around the open source workforce. Uh, so that is, you know, developers and program managers and contributors and, and the like. So um, uh, just like any other type of a resource, the open source uh, workforce is um, subject to the laws of supply and demand. And I think most of the dialogue that you see um, really centers around expanding the supply, uh, the, the, the supply of labor. And um, I think it would be very interesting to look at um, the other side of the equation. Uh, you know, are there metrics that we can collect that relate to expanding the demand for the open source uh, workforce? What are the forces that impact demand and the type of demand that I'm interested in just personally is um, demand for uh, workforce labor that allows people to make a living wage in open source, you know, so they can they can pay the rent and put food in the fridge. Um, so those are just some ideas I have uh, to maybe get the discussion going around value. Um, when I think about value metrics, um, I think there's two types of metrics that, that we can collect um that are going to be relevant to value one are public metrics things that we can um derive from public data like repositories and and issue trackers and blog posts and then the other type of uh data that i think we could collect are is is private data this would be um proprietary data like 
like costs and and marketing reach and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'd like to explore both. And I have uh, done a little bit of a, uh, of a survey of uh, some of the tooling that, that you guys have put together. I've, you know, I've got Augur running and I've been playing around with Percival and those, those tools look awesome. So um, I guess uh, those are my thoughts so far. Um, I really would encourage all of you uh, read the launch plan that we put together and, you know, comment on it, um, get some feedback. And also, um, there is a repository now for the value working group, um, open for pull requests. Uh, we've, we've had a, a couple of folks already uh, start issuing pull requests. And um, uh, join our call and, you know, beyond that, just, just really interested to hear what people have to say uh, about this group and what they'd like from it. Maybe thoughts from other folks? Yeah. And value's been kind of the <laughs> the, the unloved uh, working group for a while. So as, as risk is starting to get some pretty good attention right now. Um, from my perspective, I think there's a lot to look at um, with respect to value, at least that I've heard in the past about um, trying to ascertain value of projects that are being brokered by foundations or being managed by organizations. So how is that determined in any way, shape or form? I think value has also come in the form of impact. So how you determine like downstream impact of a project. Um, I think these are the early conversations we had um, with Peter, Peter Monks <clears throat> kind of a while ago. So those were the ones that resonated with me. Thank you. John? I, mean, I think value can relate to the invested labor cost in a project as well, which can be analyzed. Um, that's something I'd like to see us do with it. I think there's a demand for that. And, and one of the one of the ideas that I have is um, I'd like to uh, have a, a pretty extensive engagement with you know people who are actually running open source projects. Uh, so um, I think we can come up with some good theories about what value is and what people are going to care about. But um, uh, I think it'd be really interesting to you know engage in interviews and surveys and things of that nature to get feedback from industry to see how people are, are thinking about it. So that, that's one of the things that I would, um, I'd like to uh, do with this group. Cool. Um, other thoughts? Yeah, I know we're just kind of kicking around ideas here. I'm looking at certain people in particular, but I won't call yeah. you out by name. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the idea I have is sort of what I said, that that's a, okay. like a take that group um, for participating in it. To me, I think it's, this sounds like a good candidate for a birds and a feather session at Open Source Summit North America. I assume they're running, I don't know if their submissions are just kind of on the fly things this year. They do have a birds of feather format that you can submit for. Okay. And I, I'm going to write a, a proposal for that. And I have not um, proposed anything to Linux Foundation conferences. So if there is anybody who's done that and would be willing to review the submission before it goes in, um, I'd really love some help with that. <clears throat> and those are due Tuesday. <clears throat> yes. Like in a week Tuesday? Okay. No, like like next, this coming, I guess a week from today. Yeah, that would be. I was going to say, today is Tuesday. So it's either today yeah. or. <laughs> no, it's not today. It's uh, a week from today. All right. Uh, yeah, Andy, I'd be happy to take a look at that. That'd be great. All right, great. Um, well, welcome. Um, let's see, any other working group updates that people want to share? I missed the 
two working group meetings last year, last week that I'm usually in. So, okay. I don't know. <laughs> hey, so uh, it looks like you're trying to talk, but we cannot hear you. At least I cannot. I can't hear anything. Can you hear me now? Very quietly. Better now? Not much. Not much. <laughs> what about now? It's better. Okay. So I was just saying that uh, I couldn't join uh, the meeting last week. This mm -hmm. week is complicated for us in Europe because um, we are still in winter time, which means our schedules are a bit uh, messed up. So that's, that's the reason why. I'm not sure if I can join tomorrow into the team we work with. Okay. But in, but in any case, um, one of my concerns is to say there are a GMB working group now that it seems that they have a working uh, value working group and a working risk working group. Because those were two focus areas, and probably you saw my message in the mailing list, just proposing to uh, come back to the regions. So that the GMB working group deals with GMB and nothing else. I think if we agree, we now have working groups in, in all of those areas. So is the concern that there's um, work being split across several working groups, or is it about what the no what the, the, the value value that, If you remember, at some point we decided that risk and value were going to be dealt with within GMB because there were no other working groups dealing with them. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. Exactly. But now we have working groups working yep. with that. So I think it makes sense to officially remove that from GMB. So that, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about going uh, with me for the working group and removing the references to risk and value that are still there. Oh yeah, I and agree. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Yep, I, I can I think make a part of the break instead of that. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. Well, I think that'll give a little bit more latitude to GMD as well, not having to. Yeah. Really so I think the, the one thing to think about in this case is um, obviously there are some goals, question metrics, that whole idea that um, might be shared between GMD or risk and value. And so trying, to, and I'll I always attend these meetings, but trying not to duplicate the efforts yeah. across these working groups, that's all. I agree. Just kind of being attentive to that. Not not a problem to solve right now, but just something to keep on your radar. And then uh, there is maybe a, a meta problem, which is the name of GMB. Because when you talk to people, many of them don't realize what GMB is until you explain the theory. So I was thinking about proposing something like maybe evolution or something like that, which is easier to understand, or maybe help even something that when people hear that, they understand what we are talking about. But sure. Like risk or value, which are very good names because everybody understands what we, we, we do right. intend. Diversity and inclusion. Very. Exactly. Yep. The is like a bit, a, a bit a con or something like this. Yeah, it's a, it's a very colloquial term for this, for this group. I what, mean, about, it, what about activity? I mean, activity most of now is one of the focus areas that could be. I think it could I mean, be. Yeah. These are what we're doing in GMD are the activity metrics that are kind of core. And mm -hmm. I think that's how, I mean, it's a, people would know what that means. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe we can start a thread in the mailing list just, just to see which proposals people may have. Mm -hmm. The activity could be, yeah. Yep, no, that's, that's I, I agree. I, I've gotten very used to GMD, but no, it's, me too. It's, it's out me of too. habit. You're right. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Okay, no, that's good. Thanks. Um, let's see, DNI, or I'm sorry, is there anything else from GMD? Or is that, Jesus, are you good? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, Georg, did you have anything from DNI? Uh, no, we are, nope, there's nothing new. Okay. Um, and then Google Summer of Code, looks like it's still kind of just rolling forward slowly but surely. 
I think the deadline is sometime in early April. Call sheeps. Is it the 6th? Okay. And so it's coming up shortly. Um, anyway, I think that's, that's that. Um, I might like to propose, would you guys be okay with, I think Grimoire Lab is getting a, a lot of attention. Would you be okay if in the governance document we put Augur at top? I don't think any in, students have expressed interest in Augur. No problem. Okay, just trying to highlight it towards the top. Okay, I'll put that in. Um, okay, um, anything else on people's, people's mind? Then, Georg? One of the things that we've been working on is the DCO, the Developer's oh, yeah. Bit of Origin. We now have four out of 29 repositories with the activated bot. The DNI working group is waiting for the results or just for experience before we do go ahead and activate it. We started with the governance repository. And so all of the Google Summer of Code students have to <laughs> have to learn it. And it works so it works really well. Um, if anyone uses GitHub to make contributions, there is a nice browser plugin that automates the process. And for everyone working locally with uh, Git commands, they just add a hyphen S to their commits. So it's once you get used to it, it's really no overhead. It's just uh, adding a little bit more learning on top. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've installed the Firefox plugin, it is a piece of cake, right? I mean, it's yeah. an extension, whatever you call it. So related to that, I was looking to the main architect. Can you out. speak up a little bit, Jesus? A little hard to hear you again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're just, you're really muffled. It's just really. Happening. So it's the same computer as always. Okay. Well, Maybe it's, it I'm might be Zoom, who knows? So I'm, I'm just going to try, okay? Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I was saying that I was talking to Santi, who is the main architect in the Moir Lab, about switching all the repositories in the Moir Lab to the DC robot. Yeah. And uh, probably we're doing that next week. Okay. So Santi was saying about the rationale, but basically I see this is something coming from the Linux Foundation, like there is a rationale at all, I think. Uh, but there was some discussion with the developers about um, what we gain with this and all of that. So we know that in many cases, the developers are a bit reluctant to having more bureaucracy or any other thing. So that's okay. everything we're going to migrate during the next uh, week or something. Oh, that's great. Okay, thanks. Um, is there any, Georg, do you have to do anything for that or is that something that's easily deployed by folks from Grimoire Lab? It has to be someone who is in charge of the chaos organization. I'm happy to do it. Um, I think there's anyone, some folks from yeah, Anyone yeah. can go and just submit uh, it. No, we can, uh, Walter, Danny, and myself uh, can do that. Okay. The only thing is to synchronize with the people who are committing you. Because once you set up the bot uh, commit without the, sign the signature, I'm not going to be accepted. So it's, it's just a matter of synchronizing with the developers. Okay. All right, good. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you, Georg. DCO bot up and running. Um, what else from folks? All right. Well, that's all I've got. Um, till next week, at least on this call. I'll see some, um, some of you very shortly again. Yeah. All right. See you all soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.